Men have emotions and feelings too. And they want them to be recognized and dealt with without saying, hey, honey, you hurt my feelings. I really don't like how you do such and such, blah, blah, blah. Because first of all, a real man ain't gonna do that anyway. Warning, viewer discretion is advised. The content, viewers and educational material you are about to experience could challenge your belief, trigger strong emotions, and frankly, piss you off. This isn't for everyone. If you're not ready to confront new ideas or if your feelings bruise easily, this might be the time to click away. Expect to be challenged, to think, and you might even wanna scream at the screen. Proceed with caution and remember, you chose to be here. Let's get it. Sloan Lake of Peace, I am Coach Navir, one of the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as one of the authors of the book, Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored. Okay, welcome to this series. You wanna know why men want multiple wives? Well, if you haven't already seen the first video in the series that shares about it not being related, a man's desire not being related to whatever the woman is or is not doing, feel free to check out that video. Now, you, you can watch these in any order, but I did let you know that there's basically two categories. There's a thing that has nothing to do with the wife whatsoever, meaning what she's doing or not doing does not have any impact on his desire. And then there's the second one, okay? Now, the second one is the things that she may be doing or not doing or he's feeling or not feeling due to his marriage may strengthen that desire, which I believe is already there anyway because men are polygynous by nature. All right, that's my firm belief. And we see that enacted all throughout society. We can try to be blind to it or act like we don't know or not be adults and see what's going on, but it is what it is. So with that being said, today is a special day. Oh, today's a special day. Every day is a special day. <laughs> I feel like Mr. Rogers today is a special day. All right, but this video is a special video. I really haven't touched on these things before, but coaching hundreds of men and working with them in our our. Uh, student area with members and clients and whatnot, there are a number of different things that continue to be brought up as reasons that men desire to marry multiple women. So when it comes to wives' characteristics, that's kind of what we're dealing with now. And under this basket, if you will, mainly three different categories. Uh, men feel unfulfilled emotionally, physically, and mentally. And under each one of those, I'm going to share with you what that means, not just in this one video. Again, it's a series, meaning that there's more than one. <laughs> but let me jump into it though, because the first reason, some people say, you know what? He's telling me it's my fault, or he said it's not my fault, and I really don't believe him and everything else. Listen, I'm gonna let you know whether your husband is or is not gonna let you know, or maybe this does you know, relate to your relationship, or maybe it doesn't. But I'm gonna let you, some, let you know some of the most common factors when it comes to what's going on in the marriage or what may not be going on in marriage re related to why your husband desires to, to another wife. Now, so a wise woman is gonna recognize what I'm talking about and take some notes. She's gonna question herself honestly and say, am I doing these things? Is this me? Am I you know, furthering desire, the desire of my husband to want to marry someone else? Because let's jump into it. The number one complaint that men bring to me about their marital situation, and many times, you know, it's still covering the honor of the spouse and everything else, and not just outright complaining and bitching and moaning, but what they're saying is, you know what? I do not have peace. They say it in a number of different ways, but I'm categorizing it as, I don't have peace. She does not help me achieve that level of peace I desire in my marriage. Now, what does that look like, Coach Nadir? I'm glad you asked. The first thing it looks like is a bad attitude. A bad, negative, down, dark attitude. Someone who's ungrateful, someone who's complaining all the doggone time, someone who could look out a window out of a beautiful sunny day with a gorgeous sunset or something going on, right? And instead of seeing the beauty outside the window, they'll see the spots on the window complaining about that. Some of you know what I mean. We all like to avoid the negativity. Well, we should, but we generally like to avoid negative people that bring us down instead of lift us up. That bring doom and gloom versus that sunshine. That brings stale, funky air and an odor than a breath of fresh air. So a bad attitude. Someone who's ungrateful. That goes a long way. 
the most important characteristic for those men who have these healthy, happy, fulfilling relationships is that after they deal with the world, they battling whether they're battling in doing business as entrepreneurs or investors, or they're battling on the job to make sure they can provide for their family and protect them from the different rising costs and things that are going on financially and emotionally and so on and so forth. They want to come home and find peace. They don't want to come home and feel they're getting blasted to pieces or they're not being recognized. Again, if you want the truth, I'm going to give it to you. A woman with a bad attitude, that type of stuff is contagious. It creates contagion. No matter how long you hang around somebody or something, there's going to be some form of contamination. The Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, had spoken of your friends and people that you're around as associates. For example, talked about the person who was around a blacksmith. Well, if you're around a blacksmith and you know you're dealing with fire and ash and ore and all that kind of stuff, whether you're making swords or whatever else blacksmiths make, you're going to stink. You're going to smell like that environment. But if you're around someone who deals with perfumes and colognes, you're also going to have a smell, but it's going to be a pleasant odor. That's a great example of comparing attitudes. If you're around someone who's going to help you smell good and bring that fragrance and everything else, right? Smell, that's kind of a neutral term. But when you describe it as a scent or an odor, they're not the same. Like, hey, mom, hey, babe, I love that odor of the food. What? <laughs> the scent of the food, the smell of the food. Yeah, that that's, sounds good, right? It's positive. But the odor, mm, are you the odor to your husband? A wise woman would be objective and ask that question. Has he said you've been negative before? Are you easy to be around? Are you easily approachable? Can you have an open, honest communication? Can he bring something to you without you getting defensive right away? Are you batted down immediately? Just saying. What I'm saying to you is men have emotions and feelings too. And they want them to be recognized and dealt with without saying, hey, honey, you hurt my feelings. I really don't like how you do such and such, blah, blah, blah. Because first of all, a real man ain't going to do that anyway. You may express it in a different way, but a man who is hurt will likely get angry first. So are you fulfilling your husband's emotional needs by being peaceful? Now, that doesn't mean you're positive. It doesn't mean you're just negative. I don't believe people just being positive or negative. Yes, there's polarity. Sometimes we'll be positive and we'll negative. But the one thing I want you to do as an adult that we all should be able to do, we have the ability of being able to discern what's positive and negative. That ability is called awareness. Are you self-aware? Because there can be little things that you're doing, little things over and over and over that lead to big things. Just like they say, it's, it's the little things that matter. It's the little things that count. Yeah, it's the little things that turn into big things that can make you, no matter how physically attractive you are, become enormously unattractive. Again, a wise woman is going to take notes and ask herself objectively, how's her attitude? Does she brighten up her husband's day? Or does she darken it? Very important, because if you darken it, you're destroying the peace. Outside the house, you could deal with all the other stuff, all the other war, all that kind of stuff, but you know what looks more attractive when you're outside the house? Somebody who is peaceful, has a good attitude. So keep that in mind. That's the number one thing when it comes to wives increasing the desire of their husbands to want someone else. Now you may think, well, he can just go and get someone else and blah, blah, and I'll go. It really ain't that easy, is it? It's not. Or you're going to find a good man. Especially, again, if he's a good man. Not a good man, it really don't matter. But if he's a good man, he's providing, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, everything else. What's your problem? What's wrong with being self-aware and being more positive? What's wrong with knowing his love language and not just being worried about what you and what he can do for you? He's already doing for you. Is already providing for you in the minimal amount that can be and should be reciprocated is respect. 
in that respect, goes a long way to providing peace. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. That's really the first area. So what does that look like? Right? What does this bad attitude look like? Being argumentative. Off the rip. Husband comes in, says something, wants something done or what have you, got something to say, automatically, bam! He's hit with a flippant response. Or do it yourself. Or, well, how come and why this and blah, blah, blah. Why you got to be argumentative? If I'm the man, I'm the leader of this house. I want to lead this family this way. This is vision. You say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to marry this man. He got somewhere to go. He's moving in a direction I want to move toward, if that's what you said when you agreed to get married. And you have this vision, you're growing, or maybe you develop the vision after you got married. But you still, as the man, have to lead it. You have to move in a certain direction. You may want something done. Don't cause any type of harm. Why you got to get the back talk? Why you got to get the lip? Or is there, maybe it's not any of that, but maybe it's a rolling of the eyes or it's a turning the back or it's a shaking the head and all this. Mm, your neck got to move all around. Maybe that's it. Argumentative. So now you have to have a rustling match. You have a verbal sparring match when it's something that you want done. Maybe it's something that the husband wants done. Like, look, by the time I get home from work, by the time I get home from an appointment, I want to have some food. Maybe when you eat, think about me so that you also make a plate. Now, I may not even be hungry when I get there, but the thought counts because it's the little things. So now the food may be wrapped up. I might be able to warm it up later. And that makes me feel good as a husband that I'm thought about. So you get that. But again, being argumentative. So these are just a couple of things when it comes to lacking peace in that household and what it looks like. The wise wife, can you be objective enough? to evaluate yourself, to think of the concerns that your husband may have expressed in the past or maybe complaints or different character traits he said he doesn't like or things that you may not do that he would like you to do that really aren't necessarily that big a thing. Simply respecting someone, like that's not something hard to do. Sadly, these days, we have more concern for strangers than people that we don't know in public. You bump into someone in public or, you know, someone drops something or maybe a child throws something at them, what have you. No, excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean blah, blah, blah. More politeness in public than many do in their own homes. We also see what Malcolm X has to say about that, too, in this series. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. So if you got some good stuff from this video and you stuck with me to the end to learn more reasons that men want multiple wives. And you want to let me know. Put down below, no peace, P-E-A-C-E, because -E, that is the main reason, a main complaint husbands come to me with that is going on in their family where he doesn't want a divorce, he can still deal with it. He has a duty to protect his family for those who say and think just divorce is just some easy thing, especially when the children are involved. He's still wanting to, you know, provide and protect and everything else, but he wants a higher level after, and he's tired of constantly dealing with this argumentation, going back and not having peace, and he knows that he can take care of and fulfill his responsibility with multiple wives, and you're just simply increasing that desire. So put down no peace. Men, you're watching this video, you stuck with it to the end, let me know. How does it relate to you? Is it you want more peace? Am I off somehow? <laughs> with all the clients, people I work, am I off? Or is it what it is? With that being said, I'm Coach Nadir. I help people get their shift together. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to get the real when it comes to polygyny and what we're doing. And better than that, make sure you're on our email list at outstandingpersonrelationships.com. With that, be outstanding. And remember, a wish changes nothing, but a decision changes everything. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.